Hello everyone, my name is Christina Werner and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is my fourth installment of Mail Art Week and I'm starting out by using three different die sets from Sunny Studios. Uh, this one I'm opening right now is called Slimline Ribbon and Lace and I'm going to clip this apart. I'm just going to use this scallop edge to cut out what I'm going to be using as sort of like a stencil for my envelope. I'm also using the Haley uppercase dies and Haley lowercase dies. And I've cut those out using masking paper. I'm going to use these to create the uh, name for the person on the envelope. Now my plan is to have this be very rainbow colored. So I've picked out some very colorful postage stamps. And because I want to have the name not run into the postage stamps, I decided to place them on my envelope, pencil out the little corner where they're going to be, and then I'll slide these stamps off until I'm ready to apply them. So this is hearkening back to my days as a scrapbooker when I used a lot of letter stickers. This is the best way to kind of determine spacing for letter stickers. And these are essentially stickers because it's masking paper. So I'm using the edge of a ruler and just kind of arranging these so I know exactly how wide the word is, or in this case, case the name. And then you can hover that ruler over your project and then press the upper area of the letters down onto your project and that gives you some pretty good spacing. Now back in the day when I used letter stickers all the time, this method worked a little bit better because the uh, stickers were very, very uh, sticky and so they would stick right to your project and pull off the ruler easier. This is masking paper. It's meant to be very low tack adhesive so it didn't work quite as well. So this uh, second word her last name that I'm putting down, this was a better method. I had it on the ruler just to kind of get spacing, kind of determine where I want it. And then I just adhered the first letter and then pulled each individual letter that, that came after that um, off of the ruler one at a time and then arranged it onto my, my envelope. And that worked out really, really well. I was able to kind of move the letters around and get them in the exact spacing that I wanted. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so this is the best method that works for me. So I'm going to do a bunch of ink blending right over the top of the masked name using that scallop edge that I cut using that die. Now this is just regular cardstock. I didn't want to use masking paper because I was going to be using this edge over and over again, and it needed to be fairly durable. So I just used some cardstock. I erased my pencil lines before I did my inking, and then I went right into all of the inking. I'm starting out with a purple shade. This is Amethyst from Simon Says Stamp. These are all Simon inks, and uh, it just makes the most beautiful rainbow using these colors. So I'm using a scalloped edge for these uh, kind of almost like cloud edges. And at first I was like, oh, maybe Maybe I should actually just use a cloud stencil edge for this. But then I realized that, you know, this would just be really fun and a little bit more uniform and it would look kind of neat. So I used a bunch of colors. I moved on to, oh gosh, I can't remember what the blue color is, but Sprouts and Sunbeam, Mandarin, and then I think the red color is Cherry, if I'm correct, if I remember this right. I'll have all of the inks listed down below in the supplies in the video description or at the bottom of my blog post if you're viewing this at my blog. But I'll have all of those colors listed in case you're wondering of the specific colors that I've used. So I blended on all of those edges. It sort of looks like a uh, three-dimensional uh, cloud edges. And then I came in with my scissors to pick up the edges of the masking paper. And you could use anything sharp for this or even your fingernail, but I find this is the, the easiest method for removing these masks. I loved how this turned out, how that masking paper protected those areas, but it wasn't quite as I don't know, sharp of an edge as I, I would hope. And also going over that yellow area uh, with the white letters, I didn't think that her name really stood out enough. So I came in with an N1 Copic marker and added a shadow. Um, now Copics don't generally layer over the top of this particular 
uh, ink that I blended with well. Uh, but you can make it work, and so I went for it. But I find that the Copic marker tends to not look as solid, and it, you know, it, this is not a waterproof ink or a Copic friendly ink that it's on top of, so it just doesn't keep that sharp edge with the Copic. So I'll address that in a minute, and I'll kind of fix it. But for now, I've moved on to the street address, and I decided I would do some kind of wavy banners right below her name. I made them black because I wanted to put the, the street address in white and have it be very, very legible for the post office. So I'm using a pigment deco brush marker from uh, Karen. And at first I had these little V-shaped ribbon ends, but then I decided, oh, that's a little too fussy. Um, just, I'm just going to go ahead and make them straight flat ends. So I modified that, just fixed them up, and then colored in all of the areas so that I would have plenty of room to put the street address. I used a jelly roll pen for the street address. Now, I think I mentioned in previous video, I recently just purchased brand new white gel pens uh, to replace some older ones that I had that were starting to not work as well. And this just works like a dream. For so many years trying to get white gel pens to work well, this is just, it's, it's lovely to have such a smooth pen. And it's waterproof too. I think I mentioned that white gel pens, these jelly roll pens are waterproof. It's kind of neat. So I brought in that Copic shadow a little bit more. And then I mentioned earlier that I didn't think that the letters looked quite as sharp. So I came in with a gray colored pencil and just sharpened up the edge right up next to the words or the letters. And this almost takes the um, her name and it looks kind of in focus, but it's almost like putting on the right prescription of glasses and it just snaps every, everything in and it makes it nice and sharp. And I think that worked out really well. I added my return address with a Copic multiliner and then to protect everything on the envelope because that ink that I used, all those colorful inks are not waterproof. I used some distress micro glaze. And I applied this everywhere except the postage stamps. And that's because this micro glaze puts a slick surface over everything. It kind of uh, resists water and helps protect things underneath. And uh, if I was to put it over the postage stamps, the post office could not cancel the stamps. So I just don't put anything over the postage stamps. I applied that with a mini round blending tool and then used a paper towel to buff it into the paper, wipe off any excess, and just you know make sure it's a nice thin coat. Now, normally I would do this after I have made sure that all the postage is on there. But at this point, I realized, okay, that address at the bottom is a little bit on a wavy line. I think it's going to make this envelope non-machinable, which means that I needed an additional 40 cents of postage. And I didn't have that on, you know, when I totaled up my stamps, I was short by, I think about 22 cents. So just to be safe, I adhered another postage stamp. And normally, a regular sticker postage stamp is going to peel right off that micro glaze layer. But I tried this out and it worked. So I thought I'd tell you guys what it is. I used Ranger Multi Matte Medium. I smeared that all over that postage stamp and then put it right on top. And days later, it is stuck on there. It is not coming off. So there's the envelope for today, day four or the fourth installment for Mail Art Week. I hope you guys enjoyed. Come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Mountain Time for my live stream. I do a weekly live stream on Fridays. Uh, that time might change here in the near future, but for tomorrow, it's at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. Hope to see you there.